If Mozart were alive today, chances are he'd be spending time in Montgomery, Alabama. Once a year, the capital city becomes a hot spot for opera stars and up and coming talent. Melissa Bowman introduces us to the Van Vocal Institute. It's now a tradition. One special night every year in Montgomery, some of the world's greatest opera singers perform a free concert for the community. We like to make sure that we give them the same performances here that we would give in Paris or New York or Tokyo. And I like for these world-class artists to see that they are received as well here in Montgomery, Alabama, as they are received in these other great music capitals of the world. The performance draws a packed house of both opera enthusiasts and new fans. If you think opera is not your thing, you know, this is a really good occasion to hear top-notch professionals completely free of charge. Come try. You just might be surprised. Among the singers is David Cangelosi, whose credits include the Metropolitan Opera, Paris Opera, and Carnegie Hall. Early in his career, he visited Montgomery to work with the Montgomery Symphony Orchestra. That paved the way for a unique educational program. Fourteen years ago, uh, partly due to a, a relationship between one of our long-standing board members and David Cangelosi, um, they decided to start the Van Vocal Institute uh, to sort of fill a gap in you know, the, the operatic arts in Montgomery, both from a performance standpoint and from an education standpoint. The Celebrity Concert serves as opening night for the Van Vocal Institute. The next day, the stars begin playing a new role, that of coach. Montgomery may be over 1,000 miles away from the Metropolitan Opera and over 4,500 miles away from the Paris Opera, but this city is where aspiring young artists come to get world-class instruction. We do this for two intensive days where students join us from all over the country. We give them private coachings, one-on-one -on -one work. In addition to vocal coaching from the best in the business, students also attend lectures that prepare them for a tough industry. There's nothing like it in the country that is quite like this. Not where they get all of what they get for absolutely free. We're at their disposal. Xavier Rivers is a Van Vocal Institute alum. He says it was a once in a lifetime experience and that it helped him get into graduate school at the New England Conservatory of Music. That wealth of knowledge, you would have to pay $5,000 to some pay to sing in Italy or somewhere. And you're probably still not even getting like the realities of the business and real people who know how to sing. For talented students like Sabriel, as well as opera fans and opera stars alike, Montgomery has become the place to be. Expect that to continue. It is now my adopted hometown. It's really important for people to know that the capital city of Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, has got a real jewel here, and that's why I keep coming back to my jewel, Montgomery, Alabama. David said he's always felt a connection to Alabama. In fact, it was Alabama native Jim Neighbors who first inspired him to become a singer. David watched Neighbors sing The Impossible Dream on an episode of Gomer Pyle USMC, and right then and there, he decided he was going to be a singer too. You know, I remember that episode. Oh, wow. <laughs> I really do. Since the Institute has attracted more and more students over the years, at some point an extra day may be added to the class schedule to accommodate even more participants from around the country. Now Mary, you know how some folks just seem to have life figured out? And I'm jealous of those folks. <laughs> Up next on Simply Southern, you'll meet a young couple who've known what they wanted since they were teenagers and have already achieved most of it. A farmer has to live on faith. We do all we can do, but we can only control so much. Alabama is the second largest poultry growing state in the nation, so we're trying our best to grow all the corn we can for that. What we produce not only feeds and clothes all of the United States, but about half of what we make goes onto the world market. We've been able to improve yields, have some things that, that can help us produce a better crop. I'm proud of the product we make and proud that I can say I'm an Alabama farmer. As a farmer, I, I grow U.S. from a farm-raised catfish. Doing that, I know it's a safe product and I enjoy eating it any way my wife likes to cook it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Luke Smelly and I'm Alabama 2020 Catfish Farmer of the Year from Greensboro, Alabama. 
If you haven't tried U.S. Farm Raised Catfish, you should because it's delicious. Simple as that. Hey y'all, it's Kim Earwood with Alabama Ag in the Classroom. Let's break out the Rural Dictionary and add a few entries about soybeans. Soybeans are a legume, which means the plant produces a seed contained in a pod. Each pod holds three or four beans. Soybean oil is used in products like salad dressing, and soybean meal is used as animal feed. Double cropping is a term for growing two crops on the same land in one year. In Alabama, this usually means a farmer grew wheat during the winter and soybeans during the summer. Now I know you've harvested some new knowledge today. You can visit alabamaaitc.org for more ag education resources. This Rural Dictionary is brought to you by Alabama Ag in the Classroom. See you next time.